When I came out to my mom, I was around 9 or 10 years old. This was before I knew I could like both genders. I came up with a crazy sleepover game show thing that would clearly never happen as children do when, well, they're kids. And when I was trying to show my mom my written plans to try convince her, she saw a name that looked like a boy's name. And so she asked, is this a boy? And I said yes. She told me I couldn't have sleepovers with boys, and I immediately, without thinking, just blurted out, but mom, I like girls. I can only imagine the one thing going on in my mom's head every time I had a sleepover. But, well, it turns out she was very supportive, and, well, nothing like that ever happened in my sleepovers with other girls. But who really cares? Now that I'm older, I realize I could have had a way better way of coming out than blurting it out by accident. Around 20 years old, I had a crush on one of my managers. I thought she was my age, and I asked how she got into management so quickly. Turns out she was at least twice my age. I'm pretty sure she was flattered, though, that I thought she was so young. But as I tried to save myself, I kept digging my hole deeper. Also found out that she was married. And although she had the appearance of being a butch lesbian, she was straight and even had a kid about my age. Found that out through a mutual acquaintance. Couldn't be around her without my face turning bright red because I was so embarrassed. Edit. That was my first crush that made me figure out I was totally attracted to my own gender, way more than the opposite gender. Kind of a brick into the head moment when I thought she was a boy at first and had no interest in him. Then, when I realized she was a girl, I don't know. But all of a sudden she was extremely cute. Plus, I had my first real crush. Being friend-zoned without the girl even knowing I had a crush on her. I had a massive crush on this girl for a few months, and she was very oblivious to my feelings. Even though most people around her knew I had a crush on her because it was crazy obvious. Our mutual friends tried to match us, but again, she was oblivious. When our friends asked what kind of guy she was into, she replied something like, Well, definitely not one of my current friends, myself included because I don't want things to become awkward. I eventually gave up on her. One time, I went to her place and I admitted that I used to have a crush on her. She then said she was flattered and that I was honest with her, and she suddenly recalled her answer when she asked that question and started to apologize for friendzoning me. Lol. Ooh, that that's kind of rough, buddy. <laughs> I got incredibly stoned. <laughs> When I got there, a girl I didn't know very well was there. Keep in mind, I'm a straight female. She was very pretty, and I told her so. My eyes also dilated a ton, because I was smoking, so everything kind of glows, including her skin. So her skin was luminescent. I got really close and started touching her face and told her this. Later, we went into the kitchen and played music, started dancing, and like the fuckboy I turned into, I was a couple of inches away from almost grinding on her. Luckily, I passed out soon after. The next morning, I played it cool, but I was very embarrassed. She was chill and cool with it, but to this day, I still hate myself to think of it. I shot the weird human-eyed dog crawling out from the stairs. What kind of household do you live in, buddy? Do you live in Slenderman's mansion? When I was in fifth or fourth grade, I had a crush on a girl. We were friends, but I always stared at her. She was funny and beautiful. I was always so scared to ask her out. Until my brother did it for me. This was embarrassing. So, I was in line getting ready to go to class. And my crush, we'll call her Kelly. She was in front of me. I was just standing there when my brother stepped in and said kiss, kiss over and over again, pulling her heads together. And he said that I liked her. And I kept saying, no, no, no. And she said, really? If so, I would not go out with you. I was so heartbroken and cried the next day. She was in a relationship with one of my friends. Me and Kelly are still friends to this day. So I grew up a military brat. 
and lived on military bases most of my life. So anything stupid or harebrained that I did would result in military police getting involved, and it meant risking my stepdad's job. Because if you can't keep your household in control, how can you leave soldiers into a war zone? One night in middle school, me and a few friends decided to sneak off to the quarry, a place where high school kids would party. We went walking in the woods, down the path to the quarry. There are two quarries that we knew of. One was used for training, both people and the military dogs. And the other one was retired from use, which was supposed to be the one we were meant to go to. However, as you can probably tell, we didn't. We went to the wrong one. So the paths were about a mile apart when they split from the trail, and had signs all throughout and around them, saying how this was illegal to trespass, and you could be prosecuted, especially since it's in a military campsite. So obviously, being the 13-year-old girls we were, we thought, hey, we know exactly the right way to go, even though we were completely lost. And as you can guess, we went down the wrong path. We didn't realize this until we came upon a military tracker dog training and attack insurgent session. Halfway through, we decided to go to a shortcut, not realizing that they could smell us. And we came across a hoodie that looked like it had been dropped. It was just in the ran out in the open and in the random, and we thought somebody else had had the same idea to cut across, like we had. So we picked it up. That was the worst decision ever. That night, they were doing a tack mode training session with the dogs. And part of the training was tracking scent and being un unsuccessful and having to start over. The hoodie was what they were tracking. Three quarters of the way in, we could smell a bonfire and hear music. And what sounded like a freight train. So we turned around and see the biggest German Shepherd ever absolutely charging at us through the moonlight and the trees all mixed to the soundtrack of men trying to call the dog back but he had his task and well we were frightened for our lives we had to climb up a tree until the handler came and escorted us home we were begging the whole way not to have our parents be involved and he just watched us climb back through my friend's window he must have been having a good night, because he let us get away with it. Too long didn't read. Almost got attacked by, attacked by a military police dog while sneaking out to a party on base. When I was in elementary school, I was constantly being taken out of class for extra help with my reading. I had a hard time connecting the written word with the spoken word. Fumbling and stumbling over the most basic word from cats to dogs to love. Then, one day, we had a foreign exchange student join our class, Lexi. She was fluent in every language, both man-made and animal. She always sat next to me in the very front of the class. She, would actually t she wouldn't actually talk to me, but she would stare quite often. I thought it was because the teacher had asked her to keep an eye on me. However, everything began to make sense after I received a Valentine's Day card. It wasn't actually Valentine's Day when I got the card. I got in the mail a couple weeks after we graduated fifth grade. Lexi had been accepted to a boarding school full of super academics, and I, on the other hand, would be attending an awakening school designed to assess my super potential. At first glance, I thought her card was simple and store-bought. At first glance, I thought the card was simple and store-bought. It was in the shape of a heart with Happy Valentine's Day written in the center. It was a personally recorded card that activated its message when opening it up. Immediately upon opening it, I was greeted with the sound of Lexi meowing and barking. That was it. No explanation, no writing, no intelligible utterance. I was completely dumbfounded. Or, at least I was at the time. Everything became crystal clear f the following year when my school's principal, Mr. Willis, blurted out during the morning announcements his undying love for me. To this day, I can still hear the echoes of middle schoolers' laughter in the halls of my mind. 
making kissy faces and noises at me as I ran home for the day. My parents met with the school and tests were performed on me to determine what exactly was happening. They made jokes and references I couldn't understand. Mr. Willis had disconnected his phone and he even went so far as to transfer schools. My most awkward crush. This is a short story and I'm not really sure it was embarrassing, but this happened in first grade. So, we were outside for the morning and I was standing next to my friend Gabriel and I liked this girl. Let's call her Mia. So I told Gabriel I liked her and that I was going to tell her I like her. And as always, he was messing around and said, don't, it's opposite day. It wasn't, anyway. <laughs> so after we went inside, I told her I liked her, and the first thing she did was grab my hand, twist my arm, and pull me down the hallway, repeatedly asking, do you like me like me? Another funny comment I found was, we duct taped a friend to a tree and got kicked out of Dave's and Buster's for cheating on a game. I'm not sure what's worse, duct duck taping your friend to a tree or getting caught for cheating. First time hanging out with a girl I liked and was invited for a sleepover. Seemed fun, so I agreed. Well, it turns out her house was filthy. Couldn't even sleep in her room. It was covered so much in trash and dirty clothes. So we slept on the living room floor and said, the smell alone made it hard enough to sleep, and I kept getting tickles, like when your clothing slightly brushed against your skin, and it felt like there's a bug on you. Yeah, well, after I looked, I was covered in fleas and god knows what else. I couldn't leave either since she was from another town over. But needless to say, I never went back.